Craft of Vermont and New Jersey Republican Scott Garrett, who is the vice chair of the House Budget Committee. Scott Garrett, let me go back to the Boehner talk to the Republican conference That's this right. morning. Did he say anything that he was going to pull out? What was the general temperature of the conference regarding this vague deal? So the general temperature is is that, and unfortunately, obviously, the president is not engaged because he says he doesn't know what the Republicans would say yes to. The temperature this morning was we've already said something yes to something. Matter of fact, a bipartisan piece of legislation passed by both Republicans and Democrats came out of the House. That's cut, cat, and balance. Passed the House. That's our plan. It's well documented. Sent over to the Senate. And uh, what we what came out of the conference today was, Mr. Speaker, make sure the president uh, is aware of this, and this is our position, okay, and so, we want to know what his so position is. So that was a $110 billion cut in 2012, summing to about $5.8 trillion, $5.8 trillion over 10 years. Mr. Obama's plan uh, sums to $1.65 trillion well, over that, 10 years, but we I don't, don't even We don't wanna, know what his plan is. I don't is. even want to. That's just the numbers he that's put the out. Numbers, it's, now, did you all in the conference talk about the revenue piece? A lot of people felt tax reform would be on the table but not until next year, and that this bill would go through with some kind of spending freeze, raise the debt ceiling, yeah. and no tax piece. Where, where's this revenue thing? The, the, the revenue thing is nowhere to be found. Why? Because th this past November election, the American public said one thing plain and clear. The, the U.S. government spends too much money, rein it in. No one went to the polls last November to say, you know what, Washington is just not taxing enough money. And that's the message that we heard last November. That's what the American public says. And that's why 60 percent of the American public in the last CNN poll just said, what, that they support the the idea of cut cap and balance and not raising taxes. Congressman Peter Welch, welcome back to the show from Vermont. We appreciate it. This has turned out to be a very interesting evening, as I'm sure you are aware. Where's the breakdown here, Peter? Was there a surprise in the negotiations today? Was the tax piece a breakdown? Was the spending piece the breakdown? Does somebody think they got double crossed? What's your own thinking on this? Well, I, I really don't have a clue. I mean, uh, what I'm astonished at is that Mr. Boehner walked out, and I expect that the reason he did is because probably what Scott's saying, that he came to the conclusion that anything that included revenue, even revenue down the line, that would be uh, implemented with a trigger was not going to be acceptable. And, you know, increasingly, uh, by the way, this is incredibly serious. Wall Street's going to wake up, and we're all going to be losers if we default on our debt. America pays its bills, and we're now suggesting that it's an option that we don't. And the increasing question is whether or not many on uh, Scott's side uh, want a deal or they want a default. And there are some in that conference who think that if we have a default, that'll pistol whip us into doing what they think is the right thing for America. But my view is that that is bad for America. Whether you're Eric Cantor or Nancy Pelosi, if our interest rates go up by 1%, that's going to be $150 Do, billion me, dollars more expense Scott, to the taxpayer. Let me taxpayer. get Scott's reaction. Scott's reaction. Uh, are there members... Is there a significant amount of members in the House that want a default? No, I, I can't think of anyone who says a default is good for America, or good for the economy, or good for job creation. We all see the need, same as he does, that we need to try to resolve this issue the sooner the better. And that's why that's why we came out with a plan before okay. we're still waiting for the president. Let me go here. Sure. Uh, are there any conditions under which Republicans would vote for some sort of compromise, quote unquote, sure. that included a revenue piece, not a tax rate piece, but a, a deductions? I mean, you know, the business jets and the oil and gas. Mr. Obama railed against hedge funds today. Is there any, would, would that be acceptable to the GOP? Sure. Eric Cantor said, from, I think from day one, that we are all about trying to reform the tax code, look at some of those uh, deductions that are probably misplaced in certain areas, right. and we're all about that. And in the, uh, the Ryan plan, as you well know, which gave the authority over to Dave Camp, Ways and Means Committee, we said, let's do that. Let's look at the entire tax code, let's simplify it, let's make it better, and look at the, some of those very precise uh, tax and, and Peter Welch, what I had heard, which is worth nothing, but you can comment on what I've heard, is that some revenue enhancers from uh, limited deductions would be offset by, for example, a payroll tax cut extension, and therefore it would come out even. That's what I had heard on the revenue side. You tell me. Well, you know what? We don't know. We're all in the dark about this. The members of Congress are not at the table. This has been a discussion between Mr. Boehner and the president. But the bottom line here is that we have to get this done. We've got different points of view here, and it's really a matter of emphasis. I mean, Scott's got concerns about spending. Scott's got some legitimate concerns about that. The Democrats and certainly the president are going in the direction of the Republican. And the president is even talking about entitlements, which causes a lot of heartburn on our side.
but there is also a revenue problem. You know, uh, a lot of these hedge fund folks that are paying less than their chauffeurs, I mean, that's not right. At the ethanol tax credit, $6 billion, that's not right. Why can't it be possible for members of Congress to sit down and say, look, we need a balance that includes cuts, and we need a balance that includes revenues, those which will take you. the biggest bite out of but, this deficit. But, Congressman, those issues, whether they're right or wrong, don't get you to $1.2 trillion over 10 years. There has to be a bigger tax piece. Let me ask Scott for it. $1.2 trillion is a lot of money for deductions. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the whole deductions budget, the tax expenditure budget, is about a trillion dollars. There's got, more or less. So there's got to be something inside that number that surfaced today that, uh, that caused a shift in Mr. Boehner's negotiations and had him walk out. That's the only thing I can surmise. I don't know how you get $1.2 trillion just getting rid of uh, 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 business jets. That's just not, it's not even remote. You know, you, you don't get rid of it that way. And that's why it's good. I heard that the president just now say that he wants to come Monday, begin to document everything that right, he want to do. Absolutely. Well, that'd be, that'd be great because uh, we have not, we've gotten different numbers. As you said before, they're sort of out of the air. You had the Biden number, 1.4, then 1.7, then went back to 1.4, and now we're at 1.3, what have you. Uh, that's all we're, uh, I think Speaker Boehner is really looking for here is to say, we have our plan, where is yours? And if we can begin to come to cons consensus on this for the very reason we're saying right here, because we don't want to get up to August 2nd and not have an agreement, I think we can do it. No. We have some yeah, latitude we're, with we're regard there. to the, we have some latitude with regard to what is in cut, cat and balance as far as language there. Um, and I think we can do it. You know, Congressman Welch, I just want to ask you for the heck of it. On the $1.6 trillion spending cut number that Mr. Obama unleashed today, he had um, $650 billion in entitlement reductions. Had you heard that number before? Could you yourself vote for a deal I, I, that had $650 billion in entitlement reductions? I, I, ha I had not heard that, and that is causing a lot of concern on, on our side. But here's the question. Health care costs are rising faster than inflation, faster than wages, faster than profits, and we have to bring down the cost of health care. We have to do that in Medicare. We have to do it in the general health care approach. So if the reductions, the savings in Medicare are because of reforms, Peter, you gotta like, go say, fast. negotiating... A, I'm sorry. Well, well the point is, you you, you reform you reform health care. You do some things that make uh, social security sustainable. And it's about health care, and it's about right. social security. All right. Democrats I'm sorry. will come their way on that. I don't mean to be rude. I've just flied out of time, gentlemen. House members Peter Welch of Vermont, Scott Garrett of New Jersey. We here at CNBC are continuing our breaking news coverage. It's extraordinary. Speaker John Boehner has walked out of the debt.